Hey everyone, this is Mike Burke with Inside Real Estate Photography and today we're gonna take an inside look at how I edit my drone videos. So this video is sort of a continuation on a previous video I did about how I shoot drone videos. I'll put a link to it up on the screen. If you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest watching that before diving into this video. All right, with that being said, let's dive into the editing process. All right guys, so I'm gonna open up Premiere Pro here. All right, once that's open, I'm gonna create a new project here. I'm just gonna call it Drone Edit for the sake of this tutorial. And I'm gonna save it in my Drone Edit folder on my desktop. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna double click here on the import media area to import my clips. I have all my clips here. All right, once I have all my clips in here, first thing I'm gonna do, uh, select all of them. They are already all selected here, but if you notice, my frame rate is 29.97, is which is what I shot it in. But I'm going to control click well, first, let me show you the difference here. It's a subtle difference, but so this clips in 30 frames per second. What I'm gonna do with these clips here is, I'll just do this one first. Control click, and I'm gonna go to modify, interpret footage, and assume this frame rate and it's going to be 23.976 and if i play this again you see i'm just slightly slowing this down i mean it is very slight but it makes it look a little more cinematic looking a little more smooth so i'm going to select the rest of my clips here and do the same thing to all of them just control click modify interpret footage assume this frame rate 23.976 so now all my clips are now 23.976, slightly slowed down. Now, if I drag one of these clips into the timeline here, it'll create a sequence and the sequence will match whatever clip I just dragged in here. So the sequence is all set in my frame rate. See so if you take a look at the settings, sequence settings here, you'll see 23976, 1920 by 1080, yada, yada. So that's all set to go but I'm just gonna delete this now that, that the settings are all in there. Um, so I'm just gonna go clip by clip here really and take the good portions of it and uh, sort of start structuring them in a sort of linear story, if you will. So the beginning of that is a little rough right there. It gets smooth, I'm just gonna hit I for my endpoint. there I'm gonna hit O for my out I'm just gonna be hitting comma which is insert uh, but you can use this button here but comma is uh, the key command for it and it'll put it right in your timeline here and we're just gonna move along here I'm gonna get my next clip again just wait till it kind of gets going here all right I and O about there that should be plenty enough for me and this is the back of a house here, so we're not gonna start the video with those clips, but you'll see I'm gonna start just arranging them as I go here into a sequence. Here we have a patio shot. All right, about here, I'm gonna hit I. And that's about good there. Oh, comma for insert. Next clip, this is looking out into the backyard. Out there and I'm gonna set my out point about there so it usually takes me like about a half an hour to 45 minutes probably to edit one of these videos you know I've learned to be quick and efficient with it you know I want to keep costs down for my clients get these done quickly and make sure I'm getting paid uh, a good wage for my time So 
see this is an entry into the backyard so and these shots are all here in the backyard so I want to I want this clip to come before those clips so again comma we'll insert it before and just bump all these down around there and out somewhere around now that should be good and again this clip I'm gonna put before this clip in there ah, in there a little smoother usually the middle section of the clip is the smoothest and that's about good there and this will come before this obviously so my end point there actually about there that's probably good about there and for now I'm gonna put this clip in front of that higher up clip of the front so you're gonna set me in about there actually no that was a bad tricky movement there out about there that's probably all I'm gonna take from that this is the garage area and out there I'm gonna put this right after that last clip front entrance shot say about there these will be pretty quick shots I'm gonna use here for these. So you see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of assembling these, you know, in my head I know kind of what order I want them in. Sort of front shots first, like I said, the higher up shots and then the back shots. So I assemble them in order here and then once I get my music in here, I can start cutting them, you know, to the music. So, so I have this and then I have the garage shot and then I'm gonna have my entrance shot after that. This is my pull away shot here. It's a little wonky in the beginning, so I'm going to take it probably from about here. I'm just going to take this back, back, back. It's going to be a long clip. So these pull away shots I use for my endings almost always. So it's a great way to end your video. It's kind of like, you know, you're pulling away and leaving the property. And that's what I mean by a story. So I'll usually start my videos with a an approach shot and with the pull away shot so it's kind of like you know you're coming in getting introduced to the property and then you're learning about the property and then you're leaving the property but yeah so I'm putting this clip at the end I know that's gonna be my last clip so that's where that's gonna stay for sure here we have a high up sweep shot I use these so you can you know get an idea of what the surrounding area is like we here we have a golf course so we want to show that off and the neighborhood and all that good stuff, that's about all I need from that. This is gonna go somewhere in the middle, definitely before this shot. And before that shot, probably. I'm gonna put this in here for now. This is my approach shot here. And like I said, this will be my opening shot to the video. So I'm gonna take it out about there. And like I said, this is gonna open my video, so this is going right in the beginning. Next we have a sweep, high up sweep of the rear of the property. Take it in about there. Actually probably in about there. That was a little bit of a jerky movement there. I'm just gonna scrub along here and kind of find an out point. It's probably good. And I'm gonna put this next to the other high up shot we did here. This one. Yeah. So I'll go after this one. So I have my front, my front high up sweep here, and then I'll have my rear one coming right after that. And the final clip I have here is it's another approach shot towards the back of the property. I don't always do these, but you know, since this property has this beautiful golf course around it, I thought it'd be cool to show how the back of the property backs right up to this golf course. 
that's a, uh, you know, obviously a selling point for this house. So you always want to capitalize on those selling points. That's what the agents want. So that's what we're going to give them. I'm going to go out about there and I'm going to have that come right after this shot. So I'm going to stick this in right here. All right. So now we have all of our clips assembled on the timeline here. Now what we want to do, I'm going to hit command I go back to my folder and I'm going to import my song, which I already have picked out here from um, Soundstripe actually, which uh, I am a subscriber to and they are great source for licensing music for your real estate videos so i highly recommend them you'll find a link to them down in the description and i actually have partnered up with them you'll see a 10 percent off coupon also in the description so by all means sign up for them and use that 10 percent off coupon they're great i highly recommend them you know i used them for years before i teamed up with them recently so i only promote things that i really find useful and products that I also think are good and use myself so all right so I'm gonna drop my song in here let's see what we got here so all right so first thing I'm noticing here with this clip is you'll see the horizon is crooked and we don't want that that's a pet peeve of mine if you select the clip I'm gonna go to effect controls here and I'm going to do rotation. Which way am I going here? Minus one, maybe? Yes. Yeah, minus one, about, about straighten that out. But you'll notice here we have a uh, black here and here. So what we want to do is scale it up a little bit. 102, I'll try. Let's see. No, that's not enough. 103, maybe. And that looks good. I filled in the corners here, so we're good on that. All right, so now the horizon straight. So I want to do a fade in here, so I'm just going to hit Command D, which will give me the default transition, which is across dissolve. I'm just going to extend it out a little bit. That's about good. So obviously, this is a very long clip. No one's gonna watch, wanna watch this from start to finish. So either we have to make a cut, a jump cut that will jump in closer or do a speed ramp. I'm gonna do a speed ramp on this clip. Just gonna find out where I want it to come in. Somewhere about here. So now if you control click on the, on the clip, you know, we'll bring up this. And what we wanna do is show clip keyframes, time remapping speed. So if I, command click on this, you'll see this this little plus icon comes up. I can set a point here. So I'm gonna set a point there and set a point kind of where I want this to roll off, which is about here. So again, command click, set another out point there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just, you'll see if you're on, on the line here, you'll see these up and down arrows. And if you just click on it and, and start going up with your mouse, you'll be able to increase the speed. You'll see the percentage going up. I'm going to take it to around somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand percent. See, the thing is we don't want it to go. We don't want to go from regular speed and just jump to a thousand percent. All of a sudden we want that to happen gradually. You'll see these little handles here. If I grab this handle here and pull it to the right, you'll see now we have this ramp which we're going, we're ramping up from normal speed to about a thousand percent. So again, we want it to ramp down from there too. So if I pull that handle to the left, now we have this, you know, ramp, ramping up, plateauing, then ramping, ramping back down. And the other thing you can do here is if you click on one of these little handles, you'll get this little handle here. If you grab it, if you grab it and pull, you'll see, you'll see how the ramp is moving around here. So if you pull to the right, basically what this is doing is easing, easing this curve in and then easing it out. It makes it a smoother ramp than just all of a sudden just starting to ramp up. And again, we want to do that for this too. We pull this to the left again. We're easing this curve. So 
So as you see, that looked pretty good. It's smoothly ramped up and then smoothly ramped back down. To really sell these speed ramps, you really need a, like a sound effect. I have a sound effect here in my folder. I've, it's this whoosh sound. <laughs> I use some sort of sound like whoosh or something like that. Here's what it sounds like on top. You know, I'm gonna bring the, I'm gonna bring it down here. Let's hear, hear how loud it is, but. You know, like right now it's a little extreme. It's pretty loud, so I'm gonna bring the level down. That's pretty good. You, know, you don't want to be over the top with these things because then it just makes it cheesy. So I usually like to edit these to music cues. So whenever you hear, you know, when you hear a beat or a note, like there's a piano hit there, about there. So I want my clip to end there. Now what I'm gonna do here is lock the song off. So any edits I'm making here, doesn't affect the audio track. So this intro to this song is pretty long, as you hear. I kind of want it to kick in sooner. You know, I, I see a lot of edits out there that, that um, you know, the song is not edited and it just kind of plays and, you know, it doesn't make the videos very exciting because you want those dramatic parts of the song to kick in at certain times. So I'm just gonna find that where this comes in here, which is this bell hit. So once I find that, I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna bring this back here. Let's see what this sounds like. A little funky. So what I usually do is just, again, if you highlight the edit, and then if you hit Shift Command D, it'll give you the default transition for audio, which is crossfade. But um, I'm gonna bring this crossfade down all the way. So now if we listen to it, it won't sound as funky. Sounds pretty good. Now I'm gonna lock this back off. I'm gonna hit the A key to get these arrows to select everything to the right. And I'm gonna bring, I want this edit to line up with that. So, and I want my intro clip to come in here. So, so my clip, you know, it's gonna change right on that edit. The only thing here, other thing here is, there's a bit of a jerky movement here in this. So sometimes I might throw a warp stabilizer on some of these to help smooth out some of those. I'm not gonna get into that here just for time's sake, but just telling you guys that I do use that. It does do funky things sometimes. You really have to go in and play with the settings. Sometimes it doesn't look right ever and you can't, I just don't even use it because it it's, actually makes things worse sometimes. Actually, I'm gonna take a little bit of the beginning of this clip off. By the way, this is a big tip. So if you go into the keyboard shortcuts, I have set my, my Z key to add edit, and then X is ripple delete. So if you've never heard of ripple delete, powerful little tool in Premiere that really speeds up your workflow. And I'll show you right here what it does. So right here, I'll, I'll undo that. So. I wanna take a bit of the beginning of this clip off. So if I hit my Z key, it'll cut, it'll make an edit there. And if I have this highlighted, and if I hit my X, it'll delete that and bring everything back. It makes your editing speed up a lot. So I highly recommend using Ripple Delete. It's a great tool. So right on that beat there. And if you scrub, you can hear where the beat hits right there. Again, I'm gonna hit Z, highlight this, hit X and get rid of that. And I'm not gonna get it as quite as detailed as I usually do. I'm just trying to show you the process that I use to edit these videos. So you get the idea, then you know, you can get a little bit more uh, detailed than I'm getting here, but. Actually, I want my clip to come in about there, I think. So again, I'm gonna hit Z, and then I'm gonna hit X and get rid of that. that beat I want to go out on right there Z X X 
Again, this song's taking a little bit long to uh, progress. So I'm already on this beat here. I'm gonna cut there. I'm gonna get this going a little bit further. Yeah, I'm gonna get where this little beat comes in. first beat of that. I want to get that in here. So I'm going to cut there. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to bring this back here. So now we have, you know, now we have the beat kicking in here. So you see what I'm saying? It progresses the song a little faster. We want to kind of build this up quick because we're doing a short video here. So cut out on so again I'm gonna lock this off Z I'm gonna hit X ripple delete Maybe this garage shot right on that one I'm gonna go out on you see how fast this can be right about there the door is perfect about center Actually, you know what, I'm gonna just trim this a little bit off the beginning. So, when I hit that beat, um, the door is pretty dead center. I wanna do some sort of transition here to show, you know, we were close and now we're gonna go out far. I'm gonna reorder these clips a little bit. I'm gonna take these three low clips. I'm just gonna hit X. I wanna put them before this clip. So I'm just gonna hit Shift, Command, V, Insert. It should still match up with the beats. Yeah, so I wanna go from this clip to this far away clip. Right on that beat there. Cut, ripple, delete. So how I'm gonna do this, I have this transition pack that I use a lot. Don't exactly remember where I got these from somewhere online, but I'll try to find the link and put them in the description. So you guys, if you're interested, I want the full HD 1080. So I'm gonna open this up. I use these a lot for these videos and I'll show you, they're like zoom transitions and stuff. So I'm gonna do a zoom out transition here from that close up clip of the house back to this far clip. So here we have zoom. And I just want the simple zoom, which is pretty straightforward. Simple zoom out. All you do is you drag this on here. This is just a sample image, so you delete that. And now we you just gotta line these edits up here. Once these are in line, you'll see it's just gonna do a zoom out. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Already comes with sound effects, so that's cool. It's like a sort of, you'll hear, I'll just solo this. These two, it actually has two here. You know, it's another whoosh sound. You don't want these, again, to be too loud. It's, it's not bad, actually. It's a little loud, I'll break it down a little bit. Again, you don't want these to be too over the top, so. All right, on that beat, I'm gonna, Again, I'm gonna edit my song here. I wanted this to progress here a little bit. So right here gets dramatic. I'll bring this back here. So you notice that's a little too of a jar too much of a jarring transition there, but there's this like symbol rush that happens. Editing the audio is just as important as the video. <laughs> That's something I've definitely learned over the years. I wanna get this symbol rush in here kinda to help this transition nicely. So that's not bad. So once we put this crossfade here, I think it'll be sounding pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that, that works. 
All right, on that beat, that's where I want it to cut. Then we're gonna do this approach shot to the back. Again, we have this very long clip here. No one's gonna to wanna to watch this whole thing, so need to do either a transition here or a speed ramp. Um, again, around that beat. I'm gonna do a speed ramp here again. So control click, show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. I'm gonna command click here. This is about where I want it to start. And I want it to end somewhere around here. Command click on the line. So now I might uh, be getting an endpoint. Now I'm just gonna grab this line and pull it up and increase the speed to around a thousand again. Uh, yeah, that's about good. Again, I'm gonna pull this handle to the right. Let me zoom in, let me zoom in here a little bit. Pull this handle into the left, ramp these up. Again, I'm gonna highlight this handle, get this handle active, and then I'm just gonna roll this to the right and smooth, ease in and ease out my ramp. Same on this side. That should be about good. Again, I'm gonna go grab my whoosh sound effect this in here. That was decent. I kind of wanted to end on that on that beat there, so I'm gonna hit C, cut the end off. Cut this beginning out. on that beat I'm gonna get into this Let's say that beat there cut I'm gonna cut a little beginning of this off didn't like the movement there right on that beat So the song's ending here, so we're gonna need to extend this a little bit. Right on that beat. Oops, I'm gonna cut there and see if we can, um, I'm just gonna delete that. I'm gonna just take this back to where we came in. I think that'll be pretty much good. So I'm just gonna hold option and then drag this over, which will copy it. See now that I need to get somewhere. That's where I want it to come in. That be right there. Cut there. Delete that. Bring this back. So let's see what this sounds like. Not bad. I don't want this in here, so I'm gonna cut the beginning of this clip off. So it's, so we just have the brick. It just bothers me for some reason. <laughs> Right on that beat, I'm gonna cut. On that beat, we're gonna cut. And here we have our last shot here, pull away. All right, so again, we have this long clip here. So this long pull away clip. So we could either do another speed ramp here or something else. I'll show you. Well, let's use a let's use a transition here instead this time just to uh, get some variety going on here. So, so we get the beginning of this clip here, and right on that beat, right on that beat, I want to make my cut, and then get somewhere 
back towards the end of this clip where it's far away. And I'm gonna cut there and just X, ripple delete this middle out. So we're gonna use another one of these transitions again. The zoom out again. Really, so this, this pack has like, you know, a whole bunch of different transitions in it. And seriously, the only ones I use are like the zoom in and the zoom out ones. So we're going from here to here. So that's pretty cool. But what we have to do here is edit this music so we have a nice ending here. So let's drag this out. Find. Yeah, we want that where it ends. That's the beat right there, I think. Yeah, so. Now I'm just gonna drag this back to this edit. And that works for me. Okay, I'm gonna put a little transition in here. I'm gonna shrink this down all the way. And what we're gonna do is fade this out. So, got my pen tool. Actually, you can just even just control command, I mean, command click, set a point. Command click here, set another point, and just drag this down. Same goes for the audio. I like my audio to fade out a little bit further than my video. Let's see what this looks like. Perfect. Just trim the end of this off. Now that I kind of have my edit together, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and let's watch through this here because there's probably gonna be some tweaks we're gonna need to make here, so let's see. These all look pretty good. Again, this is a little wonky. You see how... So I was talking about with warp stabilizer. So let me show you guys that real quick. If you have a speed ramp on a clip, you will not be allowed to put... Premiere will not allow you to put warp stabilizer and time remapping on a clip. The way to work around that is if you control click on the clip and you hit nest, it'll just make a nested sequence. So it's all just contained in there. And then it will let you put warp stabilizer on it. It's gonna do this analyzing thing. All right, so after it's analyzed, let's play it back now and see what it did. You could see it being a little wonky there. And this is what I mean, it does do weird things sometimes. So what I'm gonna do here is try, instead of smooth motion, actually no, I mean, instead of subspace warp, I'm just gonna do position. And hey, that looks good. So you could see how it smoothed my little bumps out. When you have these long clips like this, Inevitably the drone is gonna be bouncing around a little bit because it's doing you know quite a long distance So but yeah, so I would probably do this again like on on this first clip because at the end like like we saw before like It, it gets a little weird there at the end, but now you know kind of how that works. So let's see What else we got here? Honestly, all those edits were pretty good. I might go back and tweak some of those. Um, but uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I think you guys get the point and uh, get my process here of how I go in and edit these uh, drone videos. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna hit Command M, which is the output module. How I export my videos for clients. I use H.264. 
and I have made myself, I call it export for YouTube, but really, um, this is how I export for anything, any content that's gonna be online because wherever it's being uploaded to, YouTube, uh, Facebook, or any of those things, they're gonna compress the crap out of it. So it's got a bigger file size, but a better quality, and I'll stand up to that compression a lot better. So first thing I'm gonna go to is output name here, and you know, we'll, we'll name this drone edit or whatever you wanna do. Make sure you save it in the folder you want it to be in. And basically my settings here are, you wanna check maximum depth, encoding settings, profile high, level 4.2. That's the important stuff. Audio AAC, 48 kilohertz, quality high, bit rate 320. And then you want to check render maximum quality. Once you have all that set, just hit export. And then this will export. And once this exports, we'll take a look at the uh, finished product. Alright guys, so that's basically the process I use to edit my drone videos. Like I said, I usually take a little bit more time on these and get a little bit more detailed, but I just wanted to give you the basic idea of how it's done. If you have any thoughts or questions on anything, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also, you'll find links in the description to get Premiere Pro and also to sign up for Soundstripe with a 10% off coupon. Thanks again guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.